Hi everyone, my name is Julie. This is Keep Calm with Books and Coffee and today I'm going to be talking about middle grade books. I don't read a ton of middle grade but I do enjoy the ones I read usually. Like if I take the time to pick out something I do usually enjoy what I pick up because um, they're usually fun adventure stories with really beautiful themes and usually beautiful writing and um, I just usually love them. However, uh, I don't take the time to read a ton of them, so I, when Julie from Home With My Bookshelf recently requested I do a recommendations video, uh, I felt like I didn't have a ton of recs to talk about, uh, simply because I haven't read very broadly in this age group. However, I kind of wanted to do a because I've read this, I also want to read that video. So this is sort of a mix between things that I have enjoyed and things I want to try. So the first book um, I have here is The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. I really, really enjoyed this a couple of years ago. It's all about um, Luna, I think is the, the main character's name. Um, and she is a young girl who... Yeah, Luna. She's a young girl who was basically every year a village, leaves a child out in the woods to sacrifice this child to the witch. However, the witch doesn't understand why the village is leaving children for her, so she takes these children across the forest to other families who want to adopt them. And this cycle continues for years and years, and this village gets more and more things going on within it with between magic and politics and everything. Um, and then eventually, um, the witch accidentally feeds the child too much moonlight rather than starlight, so she adopts the baby so that she can teach the child magic. And Luna is that child, and this is the story of how all of that comes together and gets resolved. And I absolutely love this. There's little dragons, there's swamp monsters, um, but I have read this a couple of years ago now, and I don't remember all the details, but I absolutely adored it. Um, however, there are two books that remind me similarly of this when I read their descriptions, and they're very similarly named as well. The first is The Witch's Boy by Kelly Barnhill. And this is about um, a kid whose brother uh, dies in an accident. They're identical twin brothers. And um, when this happens, the village seems to think that the wrong brother died in this accident. And um, however, at a certain point, um, a magical person comes along and kind of drags the, the surviving brother on an, advent an adventure and a quest that he specifically is needed for. So this sounds a lot um, like Kelly Barnhill's other book that I just had, this one, uh, in a lot of ways and a lot of themes, uh, but it also sounds like a fun adventure. And then the other is The Witch's the Witch Boy by Molly Knox Osterag, Osterag, and this is a graphic novel centering around um, a young guy who uh, I think in his world witches learn magic and, or girls learn magic and become witches and uh, the boys do something else, but he wants to learn magic with the girls. So this is sort of an exploration of that. Sounds really good has been on my TBR for years. I actually didn't know until I was doing this research that this is also a graphic novel, so it sounds like a very fun time. Next up, I have read Zeta the Space Girl by Ben Hapke. This is a very fun little trilogy. I highly recommend it if you can get your hands on it. It's uh, about Zeta, who is a Earth girl, but she gets dragged into space with her best friend, and they go on all sorts of adventures um, across the galaxy super cute, so fun, so wholesome, cute little graphic novel style. Ben Hatke is great for graphic novel style. I love his books. I want to read more by him. So there are two graphic novel series that are middle grade that I'd like to read after reading Zeta the Space Girl. Um, they seem to have sort of similar um, ideas. The first is Amulet, which is by Kazu Kishibushi. And this is an adventure fantasy graphic novel where a brother and sister are dragged into a fantasy world, um, I think in order to rescue their mother. I read the first volume a few years ago and I never continued with it, so I'd like to get back to that at some point. It's just, the art style is really pretty and, and cool and all of the, the art concept for like the world really intrigued me at the time. 
The other one is One Year at Ellesmere by Faith Erin Hicks. I have also read other graphic novels by Faith Erin Hicks and I absolutely love her style. I think her most popular work is probably Pumpkinheads, which she did with um, Rainbow Rowell. But I, this looks like a very fun graphic novel in which a young girl goes to a boarding school and she has all the typical boarding school problems of a bully and fitting in the social structure and everything. But then there's also a magical creature maybe trying to destroy the school. Sounds fun. Sounds like something that would be right up my street. And it looks super cute as far as the art style goes. Next up, I have to mention the quintessential uh, middle grade series of the Percy Jackson books and the Kane Chronicles, both of which are middle grade, both of which I really enjoyed. The other series tend to stray into uh, young adult territory, I think, but um, these first couple of series are very middle grade-ish. And um, after reading these and all the synopses of books that are recommended based on these, I think most I want to read The Trials of Morgan Crow, of course, which is by Jessica Townsend. Um, this series has been literally everywhere. I've seen it so many places. Um, there's a girl who, who is destined to die on her like 11th birthday, I think, but then a character from a magical world pulls her into a magical boarding school, and then I'm sure she has adventures. I mean, that's the whole premise of middle grade. But uh, it sounds, it does sound good. It does sound like something that would be right up my alley and I do want to give it a try. Then the other series is directly related to Percy Jackson in the Magnus Chase series by um, Rick Riordan. This is The Sword of Summer. This is the first book. I would like to try this um, and, and jump into this series. This is a bit of a cheat for this one just because there are so many Percy Jackson related, um, not Percy Jackson, Rick Riordan presents books that I would also like to try, especially The Arusha and The Hands of Time, I think is the first book by Roshani Chakshi. I'd like to try that. I'd like to try this. The, there's a bunch of middle grade out there. Um, I believe there's one by Dragon Pearl by Yoon Ha Lee, as well as I can't remember the one by Rebecca Roanhorse. I can't remember that title, but pretty much anything that falls under the Rick Riordan Presents umbrella I would like to try at some point because they are good adventure stories. I love the um, way they build in mythology and story and tales and this is just sort of my favorite type of middle grade so this is an umbrella recommendation or want to try part of For Anything by the Rick Riordan Presents but yes. Next up is Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wayne Jones. I believe this is middle grade. I have always been told it's middle grade and I read this as a middle grader. Middle grader? Young person. So, <laughs> um, but as a young person, this was a very fine book for me. I absolutely loved it. I know a lot of people think this story isn't as clear in book form as it is in the uh, movie. However, it's very whimsical, very fun. Um, however, what I would like to read based on this is The Golden Compass by Philip Pullman. I have never read that story and I would like to try it at some point. Um, I know it is very popular, but I never got my hands on it as a kid. Um, so at some point I would like to try that. Then the other book that I'd like to read based on House Moving Castle is The House with Chicken Legs by Sophie Anderson. It just seems appropriate to want to read a moving house book and a moving house book. <laughs> so basically this is about a uh, 12 year old Marinka wants a friend, a friend who is not her house with chicken legs. Um, she wants a human companion. So this is the story of her trying to find that, I believe. It looks super cute. I love all the covers that this has and I really wanna read it. Then the last one I have is actually a reverse. I have two books that I have read and one book that I would like to read based on those two. The first is Brown Girl Dreaming by Jacqueline Woodson. This is a collection of poems written in verse uh, that Jacqueline Woodson wrote based on her experience of growing up Black in America in both the North and the South. She talks about both the good and the bad, the pain and the joy that she experienced as a young Black girl growing up and kind of experiencing these two different cultures. It's beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. Um, I definitely recommend the audiobook. 
it is uh, read by Wilson and it just flows beautifully on audiobook and you really get the rhythm and the feeling that she evokes in each one of these through that so it's excellent and then the other one that I have read I just finished this week and it's Ancestor Approved and this is um I think it's technically listed as by Cynthia Lydic Smith but this has a bunch of contributors a bunch of native contributors to this short story collection um it's centered around young people like middle grade middle schooler and maybe a little younger I think most of the students or um kids are um native kids going to powwows both um kids who have never been to a powwow before and don't know exactly what it is all the way up through people who go to them all the time and um, the experience the wide range of experience of native people at powwows as well as all over the country it's really a great collection this was also another one that I listened to on audiobook and really enjoyed um, but it is not written in verse it's written in all kinds of different styles because a bunch of different contributors um, but this was excellent and I really really enjoyed this as well then the then the book that I would like to read based on these two is other words for home by Jasmine Warga and this is written in verse and it is about a Syrian refugee family um, in the United States I believe and it is written in verse and I've just heard good things about it it seems beautiful and I think I have access to the audiobook of this if I can I like to listen to um, books written in verse on audiobook it just usually helps me absorb it all a little bit better and um, yeah this is I, I don't really know anything more about it because the description is super short everywhere I look it up but that's the last one I wanted to talk about here today I hope you found some books that you might be interested in or some recommendations that you can take away from this like I said I can't endorse all of these books yet but these are just some ones that I've heard good things about and would like to try myself as well as ones I have read uh, but that is it for me today if you have any suggestions based on these books I'd love to hear them as well um but yeah that is it for me today thank you so much for watching if you want to see me again go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and I will see you next time bye <music>